In this video, we'll learn how to create new layouts for our lesson, and then how to update the content in our lesson to match the new layouts. So for example, here we have our desktop default layout, and we will create a phone portrait layout for the same content. We'll also see how the templates already have this functionality built in so that you don't have to make those changes. We are here in our sample lesson, which has a few simple pages, an interactive page, and a couple of quiz templates. And we're ready to create our new layout. We recommend creating different layouts after your lesson is complete or near complete, uh, which we'll get into a little bit more later. So the layout information is up here at the top of the page, and we can view our current layouts. Uh, right now we just have the default desktop layout. And to create a new layout, we'll go over to this gear icon and select that. From here, we can add a new layout. So we'll say add. And we can choose from one of these presets. You probably don't need to create each of these different layouts for your lessons. In many cases, desktops and a phone layout are sufficient because the tablet landscape is pretty similar to the desktop and some of them are very close to one another. If you create a phone portrait layout, uh, you probably don't need to bother with a phone landscape, uh, but it depends on your content. Similarly, your content might not make any sense to be viewed, say, on a phone. Uh, for example, if you have a software simulation, you probably don't want your learners to view that on a phone uh, because the screen area will be too small to see both the context of where they are clicking and read all the details in the screenshots uh, that they need to make effective choices. When making a new layout, uh, start with one. You don't want to create all of them at once and then go and edit them. Uh, and we'll see why that is a little bit later. So let's go ahead and create our phone portrait layout. So we'll choose that. The default width and height is fine. We'll say OK. And then OK. So now that we have created a new layout, uh, we need to switch over to view that layout. So we'll come over here to this dropdown, and we'll choose Phone Portrait. We can see that the page width has changed here. So now it's 485, and it's a little bit taller at 763. So from here, we can just go ahead and start moving objects around and uh, placing them out for this particular layout. So for example, this text looks fine. Maybe I can move it up or down. Uh, this image, I'll move down here and make it smaller. Uh, this arrow is no longer really necessary. We do not want to delete this object, because if I delete it from this phone portrait view, it's going to delete it from the lesson entirely. So if something is deleted or altered in one view, uh, that will affect all the other views. So placement and size can differ from view to view, but uh, whether or not an object exists or any actions that are taken on the object or things like the start visible property are all persistent throughout each view. So if you don't want an object in a particular view, uh, simply move it off screen. So we'll just place that arrow there and uh, when we view the desktop version, it'll still be where it needs to be. So we'll just go through and start relaying out our objects on different pages. Note that if you make changes to the text size or the text itself, so example if I added more text here, 
those changes, of course, will be in all of the different uh, layouts. However, uh, media can be swapped. So for example, I have this laptop image. If I want to, I can switch it out for a different image for the phone portrait view. And then I can move this down. So this might be a case where I would want to change the font size to make it smaller. Uh, however, that will change the font size across all the different layouts. So instead, what I can do is I can actually make my page a little bit taller to accommodate the amount of content that's on the screen. So I can come down here to this arrow or this caret on the ruler and, uh, and pull it down to make this particular page a little bit taller. And that will not affect the other pages in this lesson. So from here, we'll just continue laying out our content. This page is a little bit different. Uh, I might need to alter this quite a bit to change the, uh, the layout from a horizontal layout to sort of vertical tabs. Note that copying objects when you're dealing with these different layouts can be a little bit tricky. For example, if I copy this background and paste it into a different layer, uh, we might get some weird behavior across the different views. So it's fine to copy and paste objects and say use the copy coordinates and use that as a, a method to help me line up content. But generally, it's, it's going to be tricky to copy and paste things across layers uh, because then you'll need to go back to the other views and just make sure everything is, is lining up correctly. So I'm going to use this as a guide for setting up this content, uh, but I'm eventually going to delete this one. So now that I've lined up this layer, I can go back and delete this background image. Like we mentioned earlier, it's generally a good idea to start with a finished or almost finished lesson. Uh, otherwise, for example, if I needed to add a fourth button here or a fourth tab, uh, it's going to be a decent amount of work to make sure that that looks good across all different layouts. So for example, if we copy and paste this and create a fourth item, and a fourth layer. I also need to go back and make sure that that looks good in my default desktop layout. Uh, the more that you can get done earlier, the better. For example, here this button is has been copied off of this one, and so I need to, to lay it out. So it's not impossible, but uh, generally your workflow will go much more smoothly if you have a, a finished lesson before you start adding these different layouts. So these last three pages here were built using our question templates or question templates and results templates, and they've already been set up pretty much to, to work. So the objects have been moved over uh, and they're sort of laid out so that they're not going to run off the edge of the screen and the feedback is shown below. Um, so depending on the nature of your questions, you might have to rearrange these just a little bit, uh, but for the most part, they should be pretty much ready to go. And same with the results, it's already sort of laid out uh, with this phone portrait in mind. 
the master template as well. So let's go back to the beginning and see how this looks. So we'll go ahead and preview. And here I can see my desktop layout. And in order to simulate the phone layout, I can just drag the preview window so that it's shorter or less wide. And then it switches to the, uh, the phone portrait mode. And you can see the, the template is already updating up here. And the changes that we made to these lesson pages uh, are updating down here. And there's our different image. We have a phone in this layout. And if we switch back to the desktop layout, it switches to the desktop layout or the desktop image. The last new feature that we want to highlight is the float option. So for example, if we preview this lesson and we make the page shorter so that we have to scroll, uh, the top bar here and all of the different buttons are set to float. Uh, that means that if I scroll down, the position of these objects updates. So it's always at the top of the current viewport. So this is useful if again, somebody's looking at something on a smaller screen, or if you have to create a very tall page to fit all of your content, uh, by having master level resources or certain resources float along with the view screen, regardless of scrolling, uh, that allows them to get back to you know the next button or the menu at any point. So to set that up, uh, we'll do that right here on page one. Uh, for example, let's say we had another shape that we wanted to add as a footer bar, uh, we can go over to the properties and look at the offset from property. So right now by default, it's set to top left, which means that it'll scroll off the screen and uh, the position is uh, at zero pixels offset from the left and 730 from the, from the top. Uh, but we can change that to float bottom left. So the XY position is now being calculated from the bottom left hand corner of the page. And because it's set to float, that means that when we preview this, it's always going to float here at the bottom. So when I scroll down, it's going to move to match the bottom of the viewable area. So it's pretty unusual that you would have a header and a footer both floating. Uh, generally, you would only use one or the other, but this is just for illustrative purposes. And the float property for this uh, footer bar here uh, is not linked. So you can have objects that float in certain views and maybe just aren't even on the screen in other views. So for example, this one here, I can change it to be offset from top left. Uh, so it's, it's placed off screen and it'll never show up on the screen. But in the phone portrait view, it is set to float from the bottom left. From here, we can just repeat that process for our next layout. For example, if I wanted to create a tablet portrait layout, uh, I can do so now. However, what I'm going to do is switch to the default layout first, because the default desktop layout is closer to what I want than the phone portrait is. And whatever I'm viewing will be the one that it starts with. So I'm going to switch to my default layout first, go up to the gear and add a new layout, and choose tablet portrait. And now I'm going to switch to the tablet portrait layout. And from here, I can make whatever adjustments I need to make using the desktop as the starting point.
And once again, I'll continue this process throughout these different pages.